With the NDA finally lifted, now it's time to take a real look at those fancy new Be Quiet Silent Wing 4s. But this is not going to be an ordinary review. As of now, I do not have three of any of those new Silent Wing 4 models. But what I do have is a Silent Wing 4 140mm PVM, a Silent Wing 4 140mm PVM high speed, a Silent Wing 4 Pro 140mm and as part of a very special request we do have a Silent Wing 4 Pro in 120mm. And this means that although I'm not able to make an ordinary review as I'm usually doing, though this will follow as soon as I get more of them, but what we can do is have a closer look at them and we have benchmarks. We have a lot of benchmark. Not my usual case test, CPU hybrid fan test, you know, the, the usual stuff, but we benchmark the crap out of the 120mm Pro version on top of a Noxia NHU12A heatsink and a Arctic liquid freezer 120mm AIO. And as those new Pro models are in fact specifically designed to enhance the Silent Wing series on top of a radiator or like hard to get through heat sinks, this should be enough to give us a pretty clear image of how these will perform once you fully jack out the rig using only freaking Silent Wing 4s cause they are really freaking beautiful. Ah, it's, it's an exciting day today. Very similar to the last generation Silent Wing 3s, those new Silent Wing 4s are coming in an almost identical package with only some minor adjustments to the name and image. But inside, this is it. The new Silent Wing 4 140mm in its beautiful matte black finish. By default, a normal Silent Wing non-pro model will come with the pushpin mounting corners pre-installed. And as the pre-release information she showed us before, removing them is heck of a lot easier compared to a Silent Wing 3. Instead of jamming in a flathead screwdriver and then scratching the crap out of the fan and most probably also jamming it a couple of times into your own knee, here the removal is a very easy two-step process. Step 1. Push those plastic clips in using your fingers. Step 2. Pull. Let's just say it's a heck of a lot easier and it uh, doesn't hurt so much. It's an uh, improvement. Inside the additional accessories box we will find the normal screw mounting clip. To install them just position them on the edge and then press them in until you hear a quite loud click. It's, it's actually really that easy. Oh, and of course, there will also be a set of push pins and normal fan screws included in the box. For the rest, the fan turned out exactly how we expected based on the pre-release material. The wing design changed drastically to a more static pressure focused style, the shape of the outlet and inlet is round again, and then there's just black. Pure matte black beauty ready to create an amazing all black non-RGB build. But um, what I'm stoked about most is the 120mm Pro version. If you unravel one of those bad boys, you will not be greeted with the pushpin corners. Here you will get the fat boys, the radiator edge. Now those are the ones that I will definitely always prefer. Not only do those provide the, the whole fan with a much better like structural integrity due to them being, you know, massive, but they also make the fan look so much better. Now, looks aside, they also have a very specific function. You see, until now, the Silent Wing series had a massive, massive problem. Them being built the way they were created a quite big gap in between the edge of the fan and, for example, a radiator. And it is exactly that little hole paired with a million airflow reasons, which led to the Silent Wing 3s not being so good on high static pressure applications such as radiators. And that was actually measurable. Just take the Silent Wing 3 high speed versus a light wing high speed, as we did within the Silent Loop 2 review. As it turned out, the Be Quiet low-end fans beat the crap out of the pro Silent Wing 3 high speed lineup. 
Now on the sign at wing 4s, this is about to change as the new radiator edge mounting pieces are fully covering a 120mm spot. But there is also another thing that I noticed which is quite cool. Additionally to the rubber that is placed around the screw hole of those radiator edges, the inlet and outlet of a silent wing 4 fan has a tiny ring made out of rubber all around it. And once you install it or you just lay it flat on the table for you no know, demonstration, it is this rubber ring which touches whatever you put the fan against. So as far as rubberization for vibration removal goes, this is basically 100% contact. But let's also get to the one thing that got me really excited beforehand. This PVM cable. Stay. This damn thing is so freaking premium, it is not even funny anymore. The header itself is lengthened to give you a, a firm grip when ripping it out and the cable itself is not just sleeved with some like random ass material but those are, it's, it's like real cloth. Cloth as in type of material that you would see like on high premium quality PUC extension cables. And I might be a bit overhyped on, on this one on my end but I'm such a fan of, of the way that these were made. Like, like these feel so so extremely sturdy, so high quality, and then don't give me the feeling that if I, if I rip it out a bunch of times that the fan will just die. Those are in fact so good that the standard cable of a Silent Wing 4 non-pro just, just looks like shit next to it. So fr from now on, and I mean that dead seriously, I will consider everything that is not this as just being bad. As for the last mini section, yes, the Pro model have that massive switch on the back. By default, a Pro will come in M mode or mid speed mode, limited to 1600 RPM. The central option called high speed will unlock it to 2500 RPM, and the UHS or ultra high speed mode will take away the fan's crippling anxiety and unlock its full 3000 RPM. Oh, and on the 140mm version, it's 1100, 1900, and 2400 RPM respectively. Okay, with the whole hype section out of the way, I also did a ton of benchmarks. As I said in the beginning, I cannot make my standard like weird ass test yet, but I will do as soon as I'm able to do when I get more of those. But what I was able to do is test a Silent Wing 4 Pro 120, this one, on top of a Noctua NHU12A heatsink and a Liquid Freezer 120. So basically heatsink and radiate applications. Of course we need some competition for that. So the last two days I basically just spent benchmarking way too many fans. But therefore we can now have a clear image of what to expect in a real world application. As for the first contestant, it may a lot of sense to just include a Silent Wing 3 120mm high speed because you know last gen versus current gen. Additionally I also threw in a Light Wing 120 high speed because Be Quiet obviously used that as an experiment with, with the wing design. Then we also added a Arctic P12 as the budget option and on the higher end however we have the real comparisons. A Noctua NFA12 X25 and a Fantex T30. The two best fans of the market as of now. For each benchmark we did multiple runs on top of our trusty old 3900X and then we took an average which really wasn't necessary because the numbers just didn't change. Great. Additionally for the Fantex T30 we ran everything twice. Once in 3000 RPM mode and once in 2000 RPM mode. For the new Silent Wing 4 Pros we ran them three times, once in 1600 RPM, then 2500 and then 3000 RPM, just for, you know, good measurement. So let's start with all of the fans, single one of each mind you, on top of a Noctua NHU12A heatsink. While letting the fans spin at 100% of their max speed, we found quite a lot of surprising things. First off, let's concentrate on the 1600 RPM mode of the Silent Wing, for which it scored 57 degrees C above ambient, making it the hottest one of them all. Now before you judge, I think this is actually quite an amazing result. Whilst only spinning at 1600 RPM, it landed 1 degree C behind the Arctic P12, which is not only spinning 200 RPM faster, but it is also a dB louder. And we will see that on the noise to performance graphs, but for now that's not bad. Putting the switch into high speed mode at 2500 RPM, the Silent Wing 4s 
climbed up the ladder and managed to keep the CPU at 52 degrees C above ambient, outperforming a Noxia NF-A12X25 and matching the Fantex T30 which was spinning at 2000 RPM. Janking it up a step further to 3000 RPM, the Silent Ring 4 Pro ended up at 51 degrees C above ambient, putting it just a single degree behind the Fantex T30 at the same speed. Very interesting so far, but we really need to focus on the noise to performance graphs as those will show us if any of those fans, or this one actually, those are not even tested, but this one, if this one was just able to pull this off by brute forcing its way up and just sounding like a Kersha. First off, this is the graph produced by only the mid-speed 1600 RPM Silent Ring 4 Pro. When adding the 2500 RPM mode, we can see that there is a bit of margin of error and measuring point differences at the end of the mid-speed mode, but the line follows a clear pattern. And this is what all three modes look like combined, again following a very clear pattern which proves that my DB meter still works, so yay. Now let's dial back a bit and get back to that comparison to the Arctic P12. I did specifically mention that one comparison because it's the closest to the Silent Wing in 16 RPM mode. And when looking at the noise to performance graph of them, we can actually see that until the P12 surpasses that 16 RPM mark, the Silent Wing 4 is actually always a tiny bit quieter, which is exactly what I have hoped for. But another very important comparison is last gen versus current gen. When comparing the Silent Ring 3 high speed to the Silent Ring 4 Pro, Ah, so, so many words. When comparing the Silent Ring 3 high speed to the Silent Ring 4 Pro unlocked over the whole spectrum, we can see that the new wing design is clearly the right choice. Ignoring whatever the heck this is, the Silent Ring 4 managed to outperform the older model over the whole benchmark, making it clearly the better fan. And after adding the light wing high speed to the mix, it, it basically didn't change. The 4 Pros just dominated. But let's now compare them to the actual competition. For example, a Fantex T30. When throwing in the fast and the very fast models for both fans, we found that those two are very, very similar. While each mode follows the exact same pattern, it is really hard to say which one is better. The T30 at 3000 RPM managed to score a degree lower, but exactly here at 3000 RPM on the silent wing, it, it was quieter. And here the T30 took the first spot again, only to be outrun by the silent wing pro for here. So yeah, it's a very similar fan and almost identical like, like performance over the whole spectrum and, and it just changes quite sometimes. It's, it's interesting, but for a heatsink they are actually very, very similar. Throwing in the A12X25 into the mix reveals kind of the same thing. The T30 dominates the, the upper end and the Silent Wing 4 managed to take a, a little peek for the first spot here and there. And in case you really wanted to see it, here is the graph with every fan on it. Now let's switch to radiator performance. For this we used a Liquid Freezer 120 because I hold only one single uh, Silent Wing 4 120mm Pro and we let the pump run at 50% to give the fan a bit more importance. While letting each fan spin at 100% we did not produce the exact same grab as before Believe me, there are differences, just not a lot of them. On top of a radiator, we found the same 1 degree C difference between a P12 and a 1600 RPM Pro 4. And the same goes for the high speeds matching the T30 at 2500 RPM and staying 1 degree C behind the Fantex T30 at 3000 RPM mode. It's, it's, it's not the same graph. Comparing the radiator performance of the Silent Ring 4 Pro versus an Arctic P12 reveals that the differences become a bit smaller. However, comparing it to the last generation, the, the Silent Ring 3 showed us how massive the step forward truly was. The Silent Wing 4 beat the absolute crap out of the Silent Wing 3 and the Light Wings. This was just no comparison. They dominated the whole damn thing. For the comparison to a T30 and A12X25, on the other hand, we again found the exact same pattern as before. The T30 dominated the upper end with its one degree C, you know upper hand, and the Pro 4 managed to be the first one whilst letting everything spin a bit slower. And here again the charge combining everything. So what did all of those charts really show us? Well first of all it showed that the Silent Wing 4 is not just a, 
a you know usual annual upgrade in form of a standard revision with really very little or nothing to to show for no this is different this is better but most importantly the new silent wing 4 pro are now comparable to a noctua a12 x25 and fantex t30 making the pro 4 based on the results that i have for now one of the best fans available of course all of my results are based on a single fan application and there is nothing wrong with running a single fan on a heatsink or AIO. But what we do not know for now is how those will stack up once you put multiple fans behind them or next to each other. For now, I would say the T30 is a bit better on the extremes, but the Silentwing 4 Pro is ahead in areas where you would you know, sit most of the time. Browsing, casual gaming, nothing really intensive, and the A12 X25 is a bit behind both of them for radiate applications. But who knows, maybe when stacked on top of a 360 radiator, the noise to performance ratio will drastically change, giving the Silent Wing 4 Pro the first spot. I don't know, but we will know once we get more of them. Until then, we have at least these results. But okay, I guess this was it for today and our first peek and hands-on on the new Sandring Force. I hope that you found what you were looking for and until we get a, a load of those fans and I can make my usual review, have a look at our take on the Lightwings 120mm high speed. The best 120mm Lightwings as far as I can tell. Also a big thank you to Be Quiet for sending these over and I'm really stoked for the truckload cause I can't wait to make individual reviews and test how the 140mm performs in a case fan environment this will be amazing but we'll see about that on a side note we now also have channel membership so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an rg poop emoji that's a pretty good way to go additionally you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat but i will also use it to pay somebody to do the next round of best radiator fans benchmarks which I will start as soon as I have multiple Silent Wing 4 Pros because, you know, my, my insurance only covers two work-related mental breakdowns a year. And, uh, yeah, I need somebody else's insurance. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.